Peace everyone, I'm Maskart here and welcome back to another live pastel tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a simple still life with pastel pencils. I'm going to be using uh, Carbothello pencils on the pastel mat, the Clairefontaine pastel mat. I have uh, the recommended supplies in the video description. I also have the reference photo for today and an easy traceable line art. Uh, linked in the description as well. It's free to download, so no worries there. Uh, so if you're following along, make sure you get that easy traceable line art. Um, as you can see, I have my line art drawn out here. However, this is just a plain piece of computer paper, nothing fancy about it. Um, I just wanted to show you how I transfer uh, a nice clean line art over to my pastel mat. So what I do is once I have the traced line art on this scrap piece of computer printer paper, uh, I simply scribble on the back with a graphite pencil, and then I trace over top of this image again, and then uh, I do that right over top of my pastel mat, and that leaves a nice ghost image of the line art onto my pastel mat. And then what I like to do is I take a kneaded eraser and I just roll it up into a ball like this. And I just gently roll it on my pastel mat to lift off some of that, that excess graphite so that I don't have a lot of graphite on my pastel mat. And that's how I do it. I do this for virtually every pastel painting that I do. It just helps get that line art down really cleanly without having eraser marks or anything like that. Uh, real quick, let me say hello to everyone in the chat. Hello, Lindy, Co, Jeff, Apollo, uh, um, Sneaks, Leslie, and Fine Corp, <laughs> I guess. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you are following along, I will try to keep a relatively uh, slow pace, um, but it will go by quickly. Let me just find the color that I need, 695. So the first color I'm using is the Carbothello 695, and I'm going to start coloring in the bananas. And this is kind of like the, the light highlight color of the banana, so I'm just going to uh, kind of Fill them in like a puzzle piece. Hello, Michael. Lady Marigold. When you're filling this in, just take your time. Uh, you don't have to press hard with the pencil or anything like that. Let the paper do all the work for you. Good morning, Barbara. Good to see you. Uh, real quick, I just want to mention that I have a poll on my channel uh, on the community section, and it's just a simple question on what you enjoy most about my channel. So if you have a moment to uh, participate in that, will help me out um, going forward and producing content that uh, most of you hopefully will enjoy, like today. I generally do my pastel tutorials, my live pastel tutorials over on my Patreon page, and I have a link for that in the description as well. I do live pastel tutorials every Tuesday. Uh, however, today I wanted to do one for everyone on YouTube, so here we are. And I will probably um, do one every, I don't know, maybe once every other month or so for everyone on YouTube. When it comes to doing still life, um, I felt like this was a much more basic tutorial that I thought everybody could benefit from because doing still life projects, uh, they are one of my favorite subject matter in any medium because you get so much uh, 
experience when you do still lifes because you're working with a, a lot of different colors most of the time. You're working with a lot of different textures. You get uh, you get experience with composition. Pretty much everything when it comes to still lifes. So it's just one of those subjects that I think is uh, overlooked too much. So hopefully I motivate you to do some still life. Hello, Melek. Good to see you. Lindy, pleasure seeing you as well. Thank you for coming by. Uh, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to take on your questions. I haven't switched colors yet. I'm still using the same color. I'm filling in as much of the picture as I can with this one color, and this is like my, not the lightest yellow that I'm going to use, but it is the base yellow that I will use for the highlighted areas of my banana. And I'm just going to do the bananas first before moving on to the lime, and then finally the apple and the drop shadow. Let's do this part of the banana over here. I think this is the third banana. I think there's three bananas in this picture. Oh, hello, Rick. Good to see you again. It's Stephanie. Um, that is a good question, Stephanie. So Stephanie asks, uh, she says that she does not have pastel matte. Is watercolor paper okay? Um, and I am gonna have to say no watercolor paper will not work with the pastel pencils you're going to want to find some kind of textured surface uh, much more textured than watercolor paper um, what i would recommend if you cannot find pastel mat you can most likely find a pastel paper uh, it won't be as good if you go with the paper, pastel pastel paper, like the Canson Mitenta. Um, however, you can go with a sanded paper or a sand paper, uh, like the Fisher, Fisher makes uh, sand paper. Um, and then UART also makes sandpaper. Those are those are two options if you want to go the sandpaper route. Um, otherwise, you could you could go with um, no. My autofocus is not on. Does the is the camera out of focus? The camera doesn't look out of focus on my end. Um, yeah, it is in focus. It's just that there's not a lot on the paper right now, so I think that might be the cause of the, the issue. Once I get more details and harder lines, you might see it more in, in focus, but it is, it is in focus. I did double check that. Um, my auto, I don't have, I, I don't have auto focus. I have it manual focus. Um, anyways, back to the paper question. Uh, the other paper that you could try is, I, I mentioned UART, uh, sanded gesso paper. Um, I only know of one brand and that is the Canson Mitenta Touch. Uh, I've used that paper in the past. It is great paper. It's very similar to pastel matte. I don't know how accessible it is. However, it is. Um, how 
However, it is a good paper. So the, there is a difference. I must uh, stress this difference, though. There is a big difference between the Canson Metenta paper and the Canson Metenta touch paper. Um, they made it very confusing by naming them the same paper, the, the same thing, but then only adding touch to the sanded gesso paper. So just keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to be switching colors now to, let's see, where is it at? This color. This is um, the Carbothello 210 color. And this is kind of a, a shading color a little bit. It's like a slightly darker yellow. So I'm going to be going around the edges of my lighter yellow here. Gotta get a little bit closer. Make sure my lines are nice and clean. Uh, when it comes to getting sharp edges with your pastel pencils, uh, the key is not to press harder in hopes that uh, the color will lay down very sharp and clean. It's actually the complete opposite. What you want to do is use a very, very light touch and gently layer it until you get that, that clean edge. So that's, that's the secret of getting those sharper, cleaner edges. Um, I have not used the Strathmore pastel paper. However, I imagine that it is probably very similar to the Canson pastel paper, which is an option. It is an option. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the best option when you, when you use pastel paper. It has a minimal amount of texture that will capture uh, the powder or the chalk of the pastels. However, it limits your ability to layer. So um, the great thing about the the sanded gesso papers or the sand paper, like the UART or Fisher paper, if um, you go with, or even the pastel mat in this case, uh, if you go with those those higher grade papers, the sand papers, the sand to gesso papers, you have a lot more room to layer like light colors over top of dark colors and vice versa. So. Oh, hello, Stephanie. I'm glad you were able to make it too. And Gogwater, good to see you. Um, I have not, I have not tried the Koinor uh, sticks yet. I think they actually sell them in the local art store here uh, in Katavisa, but I have yet to um, purchase any and try them out. You know what, I have a piece of glassine paper over here that I should, that I feel like I should be using. This is just a piece of glassine paper that I, you can rest your hand on to draw, to color in a little bit easier. Oh, well, thank you, Sherry, I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you enjoy my tutorials. I really enjoy making them. Teaching is my passion, so is my favorite thing to do. And I, I'm glad that you all learned so much from me. All right, let's see here. Let's go uh, one shade darker now. So I'm going to grab 690. So this is the Carbothello 690. It's a little bit sandier of a color, and I'm just going to get in here with some more shadows and 
continue building up my contrast with my subject. And I haven't even blended out yet, and no blending has really taken place. So, no need to rush to it. Getting down, getting down a nice layer of colors before doing any kind of blending helps you move along a little bit quicker. As you gain more and more experience working with pastels, uh, you'll you'll get a more intuitive feel of when you should blend and when to wait for another layer. And then also with with pastel pencils specifically, there's a degree in which you do the blending with the pencil itself just by using a really, really light touch and applying one color over top of another and kind of going back and forth like that. The Carbothello pencils, um, so as many of you may know, I recently did a pastel pencil review comparing the four top brands of pastel pencils. And the Carbothellos kind of came out on top, uh, which I pretty much expected. But uh, they're, they're a very affordable art supply. I mean, the entire set of 60 Carbothello pencils, it only cost about a dollar per pencil, which is a really, really great price. Um, which is nice considering the real cost in using pastels actually comes with the paper. Uh, so the supplies are relatively inexpensive, but the paper is not. That's that's the kind of drawback that you that you get with uh, with pastels. Is uh, good paper makes all the difference. For those of you that have already tried out pastels, and I know many of you have, um, you may have you know tried it on cheaper paper like the Canson Mitenta paper or any other pastel paper and you then uh, you know kind of forked out the extra bit of money for the pastel mat and immediately recognized the difference there there is a significant difference between the papers so Let's put that color away for now, I think. Um, and I'm going to grab 610. Yeah. So this, this color is 610. And I'm going to start filling in all the dark parts of the bananas. And you might be wondering why I'm using such a dark color. Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot this part of the banana. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the uh, 210. So I'm gonna grab the 210 really quick. There's this part of the banana I forgot to color. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in your line art. How do I sharpen my pastel pencils? That is a really good question. Uh, and I actually answer that question in my pastel pencil review uh, because I had bought a pencil sharpener at the end of December, I think it was, or maybe early January. And I had been using it throughout the month and I've been talking about it a lot in my live streams um, because I get a lot of questions about how I sharpen these. I mean, if you just look, I haven't used this color yet, but you can see how nice and sharp it is. Um, I have this gray here that I haven't used. It's nice and sharp. And the, the pencil sharpener that I'm using is, is not 
the cheapest and I've discovered that it's actually not very easy to find if you're outside of Europe um, but it is the Jakar electric pencil sharpener and I have really really put it through the ringer and uh, sharpened a ton of pencils with it I've sharpened over 600 pencils with it um, in just like the span of a week and it held up beautifully and it continues to hold up and sharpen even my delicate pastel pencils very very well so it's been uh, an absolute blessing and that is the pencil sharpener that I use but again uh, like I said it's I've discovered that it's it's rather difficult to get if you're not in the uh, in, not in Europe uh, I live in Poland for those of you that don't know and so it's was easy for me to get and I didn't realize that it was uh, not easy for my American friends to find so and I'm not sure if it's available like in Australia or really much of any other part of the world but that is the sharpener that I use it works wonderfully and I hope that you guys can find it wherever you are it's about uh, it's about $60 60 US dollars or about 50 euro Uh, I switched back, by the way, to the 610 color. One key tip with uh, your pencils is that as you're filling in an area, make sure that you're constantly rotating your pencil. That will help keep your tip sharp throughout the coloring process, especially if you're working on a fine line like I am here. It's very, very helpful keeping your pencil sharp for those fine lines. Thank you, Ko. I appreciate that. Uh, no, so far I think I think I have I think I have all the, the spaces filled in that I want filled in for now on the banana. <laughs> Again, I haven't done any blending yet. Still just kind of filling in the puzzle pieces of color. So if you are following along, no need to get ahead of me. This color here um, might seem a little odd at first, but just wait until we do a bit of layering. You'll you'll find that uh, it works very nicely in creating the, the shadows that we have on our, our bananas. Uh, I do recommend if you, if you are going to 
seek out the Jakar sharpener. Um, if you're if you're gonna spend that kind of money on the sharpener, then I would recommend also picking up a couple replacement blades. Even though it has worked really, really well for me, I know that eventually the blade will dull out. Um, so having a couple on hand will just, you know, make your life a little bit, a little bit easier. They, uh, the ones that I bought the re for the, the replacement blades were only um, like two or three dollars. So very, very inexpensive to essentially replace the, the part of the sharpener that will seemingly go bad very fast. But um, it's, it's held up really well so far. So I'm gonna hold off on replacing the blades and I've sharpened I've, sh I've probably sharpened a lot more pencils in the span of a week than most of you will sharpen in two or three months. So the fact that I do this for a living makes it a little more, I'm, I'm more inclined to spend the money on it because I sharpen probably a lot more pencils than you guys do. Oh, thank you, Amy. Yes, the the color saturation of the Carbothello pencils is one of the reasons I continue to recommend them to people that want to get into using pastel pencils. Uh, there is a significant saturation difference between the Carbothellos and, say, for instance, the Derwent or the Faber-Castell pastel pencils. Both of those ones have a much more earthy, like slightly desaturated tones they still have very beautiful colors but they're a bit um they're a bit they're just on the lower saturation scale um that makes them really good for landscapes and things like that uh, where you don't necessarily need a really bold saturation of, of course, it all depends on your personal preference and style. That also makes a huge difference on which colors you want to be working with. But the Carbothellos have a good range of saturation levels between their colors because they have they have some nice like mid saturated colors also, to, and plenty of grays because you can just mix colors with grays to tone down the saturation when you need to. I think I got everything that I need filled in with that color. I am going to switch back to the 690. So this is the 690 color, and I'm just going to do a bit of shading right in here. Just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. I'm going to come into my brown here and create a little bit of a gradient. It's darker next to the lime and then it lightens up over here. And same thing right here. Let's see, and we'll put in a little bit of this on this edge here. There we go. All right, 
now I'm going to switch to this is a 642 and I'm going to come up to the stem come up to the stem right here and I'm going to start filling it in with this color I don't know if you guys can tell uh, it keeps getting brighter and darker in my room uh, hopefully it's not disturbing the image on the camera too much but uh, it seems the Sun cannot decide whether or not it wants to hide behind a cloud and so it keeps it keeps getting bright like right now it's out and then there it goes it just went away <laughs> the clouds are really moving just do a nice layer of that um, now I'm going to grab black so this is black um, this 720 730 it's black um, <laughs> I can't read the number on it I think it's 759 but it's black so very easy to find and I'm gonna come in here and do these dark the absolute darkest spots We'll add some more color and texture to the stem of our bananas here also. There's a little bit of texture here that I'll put in. Just a few quick lines. Just like that. Uh, and then when I come down here, to what's called the bananas that is the uh, that is the the bit down here at the end of the banana um, I was unaware of this until just recently but bananas have flowers and I, I did not I had no idea that bananas had flowers and they come from the ends down here called the bananas which I find to be a very fun word to say and a hilarious description of this bit at the end of the banana and it is spelled exactly how you think it is and there's also a little little hole in the peel right there all right, let's let's add some more colors. Uh, I am going to start with 210. So I'm going to grab the 210 color, and I'm going to add a little bit more yellow here, and get this gradient a bit more accurate to what it should be. Still no blending. Just adding some more color. adding the yellow right over top of that brown. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow right over top of this brown. And again right here. Just right around that edge. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing right next to the apple, right up here in the corner and I'm going to come down and there's a little spine right here a little spine just imagine it's going down into the shadow just like that Add a little bit of yellow there and a little bit of yellow down here at the bottom all 
All right, let's jump over to this part of the banana. And I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on the edge here. And then I'm just going to bring this yellow up into the shadow, kind of like this, this kind of oval type shape. Just like that. All right, now it's time to get some green into our banana. Um, this color is 575. And I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna start applying it lightly in this top part. little bit down here. Use a very, very light touch. You don't want too much of the green showing up too fast. So no need to press hard. Just give it a light pressure. Um, what would be the method to preserve pastel painting? That's a really, really good question. I actually have a video on that. So if you, uh, if you want to check out that video, it is how to store and protect your pastel paintings um, and it's a I don't know five minute video it shows you exactly what I do um, and exactly what I do is what I recommend uh, I do not use fixative on any of my pastel paintings because there is not a fixative in existence that does not ruin a pastel painting uh, it will change the colors and make it far less appealing than what it looks like before you spray it. Now I'm going to start bringing some of this this green over top of my yellow a little bit, very very lightly. It will look better once we do a bit of blending, so don't you worry. Still have not blended. Um, there's a bit of green in here, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of green for that transition. Just like that. Uh, and then around the edge here, I'm gonna just apply a bit of this green. A little bit more down at the bottom. Uh, and then a little bit on the top. Very, very lightly. Very, very lightly. Uh, if you have ever applied eyeshadow, um, pastels are a lot like that. So you can just kind of gently layer it I'm gonna bring some of this green into the yellow here, very, very lightly. Pastels actually blend a lot like eyeshadow too. I should know, my wife has made me do her makeup more than, more than enough times to uh, confidently make that comparison and know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a little bit of green down here at the end. Uh, let's add some green over here coming down from the stem. Just a light touch of green. And let's see. Let's go with a bit more brown. So back to the 610 color. Actually, not the brown. I need it to be a, a bit darker. So I'm actually going to take a dark green color. Uh, this is 595. So I'm going to apply this darker green, 595, uh, around the deeper shadows in my brown that I had previously laid down. So right around this edge is kind of the darkest spot. So that's where I'll apply this dark green. A um, little bit right here. Let's go a little bit darker here. Just find those darker areas of the banana and that's where you'll want to apply some of this green. Uh, how do I sharpen the stubs? I do that with a blade. Yeah, I do that with a uh, an exacto knife, a craft knife, whatever you want to call it. 
That's how I sharpen the really, really small pencils. Because what other option would there be, right? All right, that color is good. Let's see here. Uh, a bit of black, that's what I wanted. I want to darken some of my shadows. So I'm just going to really, really lightly apply a touch of black, not too much because I don't want it to turn black when I blend it. But if I apply just a little bit of black, then I will just darken the color and I'll still have some saturation in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to apply a touch of black to the absolute darkest areas of my subject here. So right up against the apple. I'm gonna apply just a tiny bit right in here. And then right along the edge. Yeah, right along the edge here. Apply a tiny bit of black. There we go. Um, Let's see, I need to grab my yellow. I'm gonna go with the one, or the 210, the 210 yellow. There's a little spot up here next to the stem that I just need to color in a little bit more. There we go. All right, um, I'm gonna add one more color of green and this green is 560. It's a very, very light, almost uh, yellow green. Uh, and I'm gonna use that to apply over top of some of my yellow areas. This is just gonna turn my yellow, the lightest shade, uh, more green. bit down here, right up here against the lime. All right, our bananas are starting to look pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my blending stump, and this is just a normal blending stump that you would use with graphite pencils. And I'm gonna start in my light yellows. I generally like to start in my lighter colors first because if you take the lighter colors into the darker colors, it's a lot easier to hide than if you were to take a darker color, you know, if I were to start blending out the black and then come over to your my light yellow, it's gonna be kind of difficult to hide that black after the fact. So I recommend starting with your light colors first. And I have both ends sharpened to do blending with. And what I tend to do is keep one side for the light colors and then the, the other side for the dark colors. Benefit of having two ends to a blending stump. Because the you don't really sharpen a blending stump to the point that uh, it gets much shorter. It takes It takes a bit of time. I've had this one for a couple years now and uh, it is still the same length that it was when I got it maybe just the smallest bit shorter. There are other blending tools that you could use. Um, I really like the blending stump. It does the job well. It gives me a lot of control. It works. Um, so there's just no reason for me to change. When I use uh, soft pastels and I'm blending larger areas, I like to use the soft tool the pan pastel soft tool that I have been getting a lot of questions for on past videos on what I use to blend my pastels. Yes, the blending part is certainly <laughs> the magical the magical stage of pastels. It kind of just goes from a blob of color to like a smooth gradient of of whatever it is you're drawing. It is certainly one of my favorite stages of, of the process. You can also use your blending tool to help get those fine lines, those sharp edges. 
a little bit better. So just keep that in mind. Take your time with it. I'm actually doing this same exact project uh, over on Patreon, but also but in colored pencils. So instead of pastels, uh, we're we're coloring this with uh, colored pencils. I do the colored pencil tutorials on Patreon uh, every Thursday, and that's a a live stream just like today. Next week's pastel tutorial. Uh, will be back over on Patreon, so if you're not on Patreon, um, I would recommend you come over and join all of us. All right, I switched my blending stump around, and now I'm going to start blending out the dark areas of my bananas here. And now everything's going to come together much nicer. Get rid of the that rough, uneven texture and colors. And if you are working on this project, I would recommend not taping it down the way that I have it taped down. Uh, I have my work stationary for the sake of recording and making an easy to view tutorial for all of you, but it is very beneficial to work and be able to move your drawing around so don't feel like you have to have yours stationary like I have mine. Uh, Thursday's stream will be at the normal time which will be 1500 my time Today's stream is one hour earlier than I normally stream because I wanted to test out how the different time uh, worked out for everyone because it's so difficult uh, to schedule out the streams to accommodate the entire planet um, as I have people watching me all around the world all the time. Uh, but Thursday's stream will be at 1500 like normal. blend out this shadow here. We're almost done with the bananas. Uh, once we get our colors laid down and we have everything looking good, what we will do then is add the texture. And the texture will really set the bananas off. That's when things get looking really good. Alright, let's come down here, and I'm going to start in a slightly lighter area. Just blend this out first. Let's bring all those colors together, nice and smooth. And uh, you might be wondering what amount of pressure I'm using with my blending stump. Uh, really, I'm not using any more or less pressure than what I would use with the pencils as I'm applying them. So it's a nice light to the touch, not heavy handed. There's no reason to be uh, brutal to the paper or to the pastels. They blend very delicately uh, and um, as I mentioned, it's very similar to like applying eyeshadow. So uh, if you wear eyeshadow, then you know what I'm referring to, and if you've ever applied eyeshadow, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so if you're a guy and you don't, 
um, then I would, I would, I don't know. I, w I would just buy pastels and try them. <laughs> That's what I would recommend. Blend out this green here a little bit. There we go. All right, let's see here. Where can I where can I adjust my colors? I feel like I want a little bit more green in my bananas, so I am going to grab the 585. Is that right? No, 575. Yes. So this is the 575 green, and I just want to bring in a, a bit more green into my bananas. So I'm just going to very gently brush this pencil across the paper. Um, this the most subtle amount of pressure. That is what I'm using. So very very light pressure. Yes, it was nice to see you again, Gobbled. Appreciate you coming by. You have a lovely rest of your day. All right, let's get a little bit green over here too. Don't be afraid of applying plenty of color, you know? No, no, no harm in making your bananas maybe a little, a little less ripe than mine. Don't be afraid of it. I want to go a little bit darker on this end, so I'm going to grab, let's see here, is this 690? 615. Okay, so this is this color here is 615. It's just a slight bit darker brown than the one we've used before. And I just want to increase the contrast of this shadow here. Let's go on right here. There we go. Let's see, where else can I apply this? I feel like right in here, this shadow needs to be just a bit darker. And I'm going to grab my blending stump really quick and just blend that out. There we go. Uh, let's see, where else can I use this? Ooh, I'm going to use this up in my stem real quick. And let's add a little bit right here. So just a little bit of color diversity in my stem so it's not so flat looking. Because I only have two colors going on there right now. Let's take a little bit of yellow. Uh, I'm going to do the 692, 692 yellow. Just uh, add a little bit of highlights into my stem here. Just a little bit more texture. There we go. Let's grab my blending stump. I'm going to use the dark end of my blending stump. Just soften those pencil strokes a little bit. There we go. Grab a yellow and there's a little bit of a highlight right here on the banana. So I'm just going to use some of the 210 yellow. There we go. A little highlight right there. Makes all the difference. Uh, let's see here. I want to add a little bit more yellow down here into this shadow. I just feel like it's uh, it's lost a little bit of its luster. So this is the 210 yellow. And I'm just going to brighten up this shadow a little bit more. Because it's just it just feels a little too dark for me. Shadow's just a bit too dark. And this is how easy it is to like correct those those mild uh, tonal mistakes. You know, just take your lighter color right over top of the darker color and it just works like magic. It's so easy to use. That's why I love pastels. 
Uh, and then I'm going to use my light end to soften that edge just a little bit. Just blend those colors together a bit. There we go. All right, bananas are looking good. Uh, I want a little bit of black separating these bananas here. Teeny tiny bit of black, just along that edge there. And then I'll just lightly blend it out. There we go. Very small amount of black. Uh, one other thing I want to do, I'm going to use the 615 brown and I'm going to add a little bit of brown into the bananas down here so that they have a little color diversity in them as well. It's a very subtle change, but uh, it's important to have that, that color diversity in them. And then I'll just blend them out a little bit so the color is even. There we go. All right, now it's time to the to do the fun part, uh, and that is to add the texture. Uh, the pressure used for blending uh, is the same as the as blending oil paintings: one hair and some air. Well, I I don't know blending uh, blending oil painting. That's it's a little different. Yeah, just a, a tiny bit different. Real quick, I want to separate this just a tiny bit. Uh, this color is the 615 again. There we go. Alright, let's blend that color out just a tiny bit. Don't want any grain showing up. Alright, now it's time for the texture. So I'm going to grab my 575 green and I'm just gonna come in here and add a few speckles of imperfection uh, in green on my banana Just gently tapping it, bringing in some subtle speckles. A little bit of green down here. Let's go over here, add a tiny bit of green. I'm doing the lighter speckles first. I'm going to grab a, a darker brown color and do some dark speckles. Uh, that color being 610. So I'm going to come in here with the 610 and see if I can get some of the darker imperfections to show up. Yeah, layering the light colors on top of that dark brown, it really just like balances them all together. It just brings all the color, all the colors together harmoniously. And when you're working with um, the Carbothello pencils, uh, like I had mentioned before, there's only 60 colors, you know, so you have to improvise a lot uh, with with the colors in order to get the colors that you need sometimes. I mean, they have a, a 60 is a lot of colors. Um, don't get me wrong, but that there is still a limitation when you need just that right tone of color. So um, yeah, getting getting those colors requires a bit of layering, a bit of experimenting and experience to know which colors go over top of which. But pastels, they blend just like paint would, you know, so 
yellow and blue make green, red and blue make purple, all of, all of that, you guys know that. So, I'm going to switch colors real quick, uh, uh, 615, this is a lighter brown, just a slightly lighter brown for these dots here. I like the dark brown, it's just a tiny bit too dark. All right, let's come over here, add this speckles. We haven't even done the highlight yet. I just realized there's still a highlight color that I need to add to the bananas. A bunch of little speckles in here. Where it starts to get too dark, I will switch to the black. So there's a there's a few spots in here that deserve a touch of black because uh, you still want to see the texture and the detail and stuff. So I'll use just a tiny, tiny bit of black in here. Uh, and let's grab the highlight color, which I'm going to use 105. This color is 105. And I'm just going to come into the light area here and gently apply this color to bring out a subtle highlight in my banana. No need to use white. Anything brighter than this might just be a bit too powerful for a highlight. Let's see here, let's give this banana right here a little bit of a highlight. Scrape it right on top there. Let's uh, bring a highlight right in here, subtle highlight. Um, and then this side of the banana where the light source is fully hitting, just highlight that side. And then of course this part here as well. There we go. Uh, the pastel pencils I recommend for a beginner are the Carbothellos that I'm using right now. You can get the full set for about $60, $70 or so. They come in a nice container, all of that, so it's really, really easy um, and accessible. Uh, they're, they're the perfect pencil for beginners. So. A safe, it's a safe bet. All right, now we're going to be moving on to the lime. And things are just going to be moving right along. So the first color I'm using for the base color is 560. And you'll notice the line art on the lime has a few things in the middle. So you're going to see how I use that those lines to kind of lay out the form of the lime. So I have this highlight kind of running through here, and I'm working on the highlighted area first, kind of like this. I'm using my pencil at a very low uh, angle so that I can keep the tip sharp, because for right now I don't need that fine tip to draw any lines, so keeping the pencil low with an overhanded grip helps me just fill in the large area easily while also keeping my pencil nice and sharp because I don't know if you can tell but I'm slowly turning the pencil as I'm doing this. Good good habit to get into. I've been doing it for so long that um, and unless I'm mentioning to do it I completely forget that I'm constantly rotating my pencil. No need to use a heavy hand. No need to use a lot of pressure or anything like that. Now I'll switch over and use my nicely sharp pencil to get right along that edge. There we go. 
the next color I'm going to use is 585. 590. Uh, 590 is the next color that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to fill in all of all of the lime with this color. The rest of the lime. Again, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And if you tag me in the chat, it helps me see the question a lot easier. So if I happen to have missed anybody's question up to this point, um, don't hesitate to ask it again. I try my best not to miss your guys' questions, but you know, sometimes it's difficult to do, uh, do what I'm doing and then also read at the same time. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it is rather challenging. I want to make sure my lime is completely filled in. all the way up to the edges. switch my green just a moment uh, I'm gonna switch to a more an even more bluish green and that's the 595 we used a little bit of this dark green in our bananas and I'm just gonna continue shading and getting darker and darker with each layer layer of this around the edge down here. I'm going to wrap around just past where the lime should be touching the table. There we go. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the 575 green. This green's a little more yellowish, so this is gonna help me transition between the bright yellow green side and the more bluish green side. So I'm gonna use this kind of as a transitionary color and just lightly layer it around the transition between the shaded side and the highlighted side. Don't have to be too precise with it, so don't uh, don't stress too much. Kind of looks like a tennis ball right now. And we're, we're the same same strategy that we used with the bananas. We're just focused on like capturing the form of it, and then we'll add the texture over top. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the the uh, five nine five and add a little bit more of it right in here. Now I need to grab black uh, because the shadow is very, very dark on this lime. So I need to incorporate just a tiny bit of black on the back side here so that I can get that dark, dark green. 
and you can apply a bit of the black and then a bit of the green over top of it to get the right tone because the black will pull out a lot of that saturation and you don't want the back of your lime to be black you just want it to be dark green something like that uh, and then I'm going to grab the 595 green and just gently go over the the black if you go too hard over the black you'll just go back to the original color which is what we don't want all right now I need to do another layer so that I have enough pigment on the page to blend out so I'm switching back to the 590 this is that bluish green and I'm just going to apply another light layer where you can still see some of the white of the paper showing through. You don't want that white to show through. So apply enough. There we go. Now I'm going to switch back to our first original color, which is the 560, kind of lime green. And just continue to apply some of this, covering the paper again making sure that I have good coverage. Uh, any tips with dealing with the dust? Well, with pastel pencils, you actually get far less dust than the standard soft pastels. Uh, so dust isn't much of an issue with pastel pencils. Um, Otherwise, it's so minimal that I tend to just blow it away. Uh, I know people probably don't want to do that or have excuses as to why you should not do that. But I find the dust to be so minimal uh, when working with soft pastel or with uh, the pastel pencils that that's essentially what I do. And you've seen me do it a few times uh, today on the stream. But with, with soft pastels, the standard soft pastel sticks, um, you will accumulate a lot more dust. And what I, what I do to mitigate that dust is I use a soft blending tool, which captures a lot of uh, the dust. Uh, I'm switching to my, th my 575 green, and I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of the texture um, coming from the shadow side. So um, I'm just going to be gently brushing this in to fully form our lime and start uh, bringing in the dynamics, the contrast of colors uh, to make it look more spherical. I haven't quite gotten to the texture, but with this color, uh, this is the color we'll be using to add texture. So try not to make it like a perfect sphere. Let your pencil be a little rough and sketchy. Um, and that will give you a lot of really nice looking texture. Um, as you can see here, I'm not, I'm not paying attention to the reference photo in terms of like the precision of my little uh, dots here or anything like that just kind of sketching it in a little bit as I need it for transition. Um, all right, now I think we're good to blend. Um, I, again, I'm going to use the light side for the light part. So where I used uh, for all the yellows, I think it's perfectly safe. not have to worry about it. So I'm just going to do little circles. Very minimal pressure. Doesn't require a lot. Just like that. Get right in there. Now I'm going to switch sides to my dark side and get into the darker bluish greens. Again, just nice and gently. Get rid of all of the parts where you see the paper showing through. Get a nice gradient, shifting one from one color to another. A 
right around that edge there. Get all that blended out. Now coming into my dark, dark shadow. Getting that to look right. All right, lime is looking pretty good, but it's missing all of the texture. So let's start off with um, the reflective shadow in the back. So I'm going to grab, I think I'm going to grab this color. No, I'm going to try this color. Um, this is the 692 color, and there's a reflective property of the skin of the lime that's reflecting uh, a bit of the yellow of the banana right along this edge back here. So I'm just going to pencil in a bit of a highlight from the banana. Just like that. All right, that, that looks good. All right, now I am going to use the 575 to start putting in the texture of the lime with little dots. Light pressure. You don't want the dots to be too obvious. Uh, and if you get them too dark, don't worry, you can use your blending stump to blend them up, blend them out a little bit, uh, because that's what I will most likely be doing. You just want to add that skin texture very lightly. Don't overdo it. It's not polka dots just small divots in the skin. This is just the first color we'll do it with. We'll do it with the darker colors and the shadows, and we'll even do it with a bit of white. Don't have to be too precise with it. Randomness is the important key. Precision is the opposite of what you want. Just be a little random with it. Now I'll use um, I'll use the 595 dark green uh, to do some of the divots in the medium shadows and the mid-tone colors, kind of in here, following the same rules. Just kind of sporadically putting light dots. Uh, do I use pan pastels? Um, I have a set of pan pastels that a very lovely subscriber had given me um, quite some time ago, been like a year and a half or two years even. Um, and I don't tend to use them much, especially in tutorial settings because uh, they are they are expensive. They're great quality product and um, I wouldn't not recommend them. Um, but because of their price range, I tend not to use them because I do a lot of tutorials and I like to make my tutorials as accessible as possible. So I, I, I steer away from using products that I find to be a bit expensive uh, and not necessary. Because as you can see, I've created this with just the set um, of the Carbothello pencils and um, you can do a lot with a simple set of the Carbothello pencils, and they're cheap. Um, so that's that's why I tend not to use the pan pastels. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of blending, very very gently blending, because I want those I want those divots to stay there, but I don't want um, I don't like I don't want them to move too much. 
I want them to be visible, so I'm just lightly brushing over them. Just to get rid of the pencil texture. There we go. Uh, now I'm going to grab white, put in some highlights, some nice bright highlights. This will make the lime look uh, much, much better. Again, with the small divots, the highlight side of the divots now. Uh, we have the reflection of the table onto the lime right here. So I'm just going to brush a light layer of white. Got a nice highlight right here on the lime. But it's not a solid highlight, it's a bunch of little dots. So don't just scribble it in. Do it one dot at a time. The highlight kind of focuses a little bit right in here. There we go. I'm gonna take just a tiny, tiny bit of green. There's kind of a line right there through the highlight. So just make sure there's plenty of texture there showing through. Let's go back here. I'm going to take my light green now. What color? Uh, 560, the lime green. And now I'm going to create some of the brighter highlights on the shadow side. And I'm not doing dots. Instead, I'm doing kind of slight curves. Doing a little bit of curving motion. We have the... Uh, bounce reflection on the shadow side from the table here also, so a little bit of highlight on this side. Small adjustments, that's all you need to make. Small adjustments. Uh, 575, more small adjustments. This is just a bit too bright right in here. So I'm just going to Put in a few few dots. Alright, now I'm going to take my blending stump. I'm going to do the last little bit of blending. Very, very lightly blend it. There we go. And then there's a little stem. So I'm going to use 675. No, 615. There's a little stem right here. I'm just going to color a dot. I'm going to take black, I'm going to put a small black dot right in the middle, just like that, and then I'm going to use, I'll use white, uh, to add the rim highlight right around the right side of it. Yeah, I think that's good enough, just like that. And there is our lime. All right, let me clear some of these pencils out of my way so I can get over to the apple. All right, on to the apple now. Um, what are my thoughts on using papers such as sanded pastel paper or velour paper? Um, well, sanded gesso paper uh, is really good with pastels. Um, I haven't used velour uh, before, so I can't comment on that. Um, I don't know if Clairefontaine pastel matte is considered a velour surface. Um, I think it's considered a sanded surface, but I'm not actually sure. So, um, yeah, I, I exclusively use pastel matte because I get the best results. Uh, it's great paper. It's available. It's easily available for me. I just order it from the UK. Um, so... It's the paper that I always recommend because I find it to be the best uh, and most enjoyable to work with. All right, let's grab, let's see, which color should it be? I think I'm gonna start with 311, where is that color? 
Yes, so the first color I'm going to start with is uh, 311, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out where the shadow is for my apple here. So there's this, uh, this shadow area kind of like right in here. Uh, and then it comes up, comes up about here. Yeah, so this is, this, this here is shadow. So I'm just going to color in the apple with this 311, yes. 311 color. We're almost done. We're to the home stretch. We're gonna finish up this apple and then do the drop shadow and that will be it for today's tutorial. So uh, real quick I just want to thank everyone that has come by and hung out with me today while I colored this. I truly appreciate it and I, I love doing these live streams for you guys. I really really do. Um, and for everybody that uh, supports me over on Patreon, thank you for, for making it possible that I can do this for a living. You guys are wonderful. And uh, yeah, if, if you're enjoying today's live stream, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that lets me know I'm doing a good job and uh, I appreciate it. So thank you. And if you're not subscribed, I'm not sure. If you, if you made it this far in the live stream and you haven't subscribed yet, then I'm not, I'm not sure how you made it this far uh, without subscribing, uh, but I would appreciate if you would do that. And apparently on YouTube you have to, uh, you have to click notifications, so don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you know when I'm going to go live next time because I do live stream every Monday. I do the drawing journals every Monday here on YouTube. But every now and again, I will also do a live tutorial like this on YouTube. Uh, I usually do these only on Patreon. I do them every Tuesday and Thursday, so join me over on Patreon if you want more streams like this on a regular basis. But. Clicking the bell notification will let you know when I'm about to go live, so. Oh, thank you so much, Stephanie. I, re I really appreciate that. Patreon has been going really, really well for me. Um, I got nine new patrons yesterday. <laughs> Uh, which was probably one of the, the best days that I've had. It's a very, very good Patreon day. So, I'm doing something right. Alright, that's a pretty good base layer. Um, I need to bring in a little bit of oranges. So, what color I'm going to use is 692. Let me see if I can find it here. I think this is it. Yes, so 692. It's going to tone down my reds and bring in a little bit of yellows. So I'm going to pay attention to where I apply this because I'm going to kind of ignore the center part of the apple. I'm just going to work around the center. Uh, this color will make more sense when I blend it out. but we have kind of a yellowish red apple here. Looks like a honey crisp apple. Up at the top, I'm gonna to use this up here also. So kind of, kind of focusing this color around the edges is what I'm doing. Oh, you guys are wonderful. Uh, do I have a live YouTube tutorial planned for colored pencils? Um, no, I do not. Um, I mean, I do on Patreon, because those of you on Patreon know that we're doing this same project, but in colored pencils. In fact, it's right here. Um, so over on Patreon, we have the bananas and the lime done, and on Tuesday, or I mean Thursday, uh, we're going to be doing the apple. So there's the comparison. There's uh, pastel pencils. Here's colored pencils. Not a whole lot different. 
but it does take does take a bit of extra time uh, doing the uh, doing the same project in colored pencils. Not exactly as fast uh, of a medium as pastel pencils are. All right, so I have that colored laid down now. Now I'm going to get a little bit darker with my red. So I have three, two, five, and I'm going to just come in here, kind of into the center, uh, where it gets brighter red. Not too much. A little bit down at the bottom here, in the shadow. There we go. Kind of scribbling it in there a little bit. Uh, and now I have what is this? A 330, so 330. Uh, I'm going to use for the shadow. It's a much deeper dark red. So I'm just going to apply this. This is pretty much the darkest color that will show up on the apple. And then over top of this color, we'll incorporate some of our other colors to give it that reflective, shiny look. Same strategy, applying the base colors and then the texture right on top. Uh, what paper would I suggest for practice as a beginner? Uh, that's that's a really good question. So if you're just practicing, um, I don't recommend using pastel mat because pastel mat, as I expressed, is rather expensive, and I would definitely recommend saving it for your, you know, your your kind of final projects. Um, and and in that case, when it comes to practice, just go with the cheapest. Um, I have no problem uh, considering Canson Mitenta paper. It's very, very cheap. Um, it's flimsy. Comes in a lot of colors, which is kind of nice. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't take a lot of layers. That's the downside of the cheaper papers. But the Canson Mitenta paper is very accessible. It's cheap. Uh, and I would recommend it for practice because it does work. It just doesn't take as many layers. So you can certainly get a lot of get a lot out of the paper though. So that is what I would recommend uh, if you're just practicing. All right, let's see here. What other colors do I need? Got uh, kind of a reddish brown. So I'm going to incorporate right on top of this red. I'm going to incorporate uh, some 615 color to bring in a little bit of the tan browns. That deep reddish purple uh, plus the yellow uh, is going to make brown, so that reflective surface of the apple uh, reflecting the lime plus the banana um, green and red are complements, and if you know anything about complements, uh, when you mix complementary colors together, they turn brown. So that is why the reflective surface on this side of the apple is brown. It's reflecting a bit of the banana and uh, a lot of the lime. So just in case you are wondering where the brown is coming from, that, that is where it's coming from. Those are things that you always got to keep in mind when you're when you're perhaps doing something from your imagination. You got to think about how colors are interacting with one another. Why they interact that way. That's how you get a more accurate color scheme. All right, I'm going to add a touch of black. Just a little bit of black to darken this shadow right up in here. Very, very, very small amount of black. 
and a little bit even right here along the edge. And then I'm gonna immediately go over it with a dark brown, uh, 610, a little bit of dark brown. And then I'm gonna use my bright red. Remember that, that red uh, 325? Now I'm gonna incorporate some more of my red into the shadow. That way when we blend out, we get a much more consistent flow from one color to the other. Because we don't want our apple to be brown. There's some brown in there, but there's a lot of red. All right, let's uh, switch back to our 311 color. Continue layering. We kind of want to get uh, the paper covered up a bit more before we blend out. And then again with our 692, bring in some of the yellow colors. A little bit of a highlight right in here where the lime is reflecting more right there. Not too much. All right, uh, let's add just a touch of the 105. Uh, bring out just a bit of highlight. We might even grab the white depending on whether or not this is bright enough, but I think it should be bright enough. Just to add a little bit of highlight. And then right up here around this edge, this corner probably incorporate a bit of white for those really bright highlights right there. Make the apple look a little bit shinier. The sharper your bright highlights are, the more shiny you will create uh, effect for your apple. So if you don't want your apple to look like it's been polished with wax, um, make your shines a little less con contrasted. All right, let's just use the light end of our blending stump now. Do a little bit of blending here. Just go slow. We're almost done, no need to rush. I have a bad tendency to rush when I feel myself getting close to the end. All my details in the beginning always tend to be uh, much better looking. And then I get near the end and I'm like, oh, it's almost done. And then I start rushing and then I make mistakes and, and then I don't like the project as much. So keep taking your time. There's, there's no need to finish early. You might notice a certain pattern in the direction I've been moving with this apple. If you imagine a center line here, and if you think about the shape of the apple, it's spherical, so you have this center line that is straight, and then as you get closer to the edge, it curves like this, and then finally you have the curve of the edge. So it gradually curves less and less as you get to the center line. And that's a really good pattern for blending and applying your colors because you get the natural looking streaks and texture uh, that the apple has. 
and it just makes your apple look a little bit more natural. So try your best to maintain a kind of a patterned pencil stroke and blending motion with the texture direction of your apple. That's how you get these nice streaks and uh, it just makes getting the final texture of the apple a lot easier. Forgot to mention that at the beginning, but better late than never. Especially for those of you following along. Blend out the edge a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna come into the shadow, so I'm gonna switch sides and go my dark end of blending. There we go. Now you can see that the colors are much more much more harmonious. They fit together. Um, I do need a little bit more bright red, so I'm going to go with the 325. And just go add a few loose lines. Not coloring in anymore. I'm just using a few loose lines to incorporate some of the apple's nat natural texture while also gradiating the shadow a bit more. I'm gonna go with a little bit of brown, and I think, yeah, I think I'll go with a different tone of brown, a little bit more yellowish brown. Uh, this is the 690. It's a little bit lighter. This will give me more of a highlight right into the shadow there. There we go. Let's just blend that out. Don't be afraid to let that texture show. I have to blend it out perfectly smooth or anything. All right, let's take a bit of white and now I'm just going to brighten up this side very slowly until I get that, that shine that I want in my apple. Slowly building it up. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Real Mithril. I appreciate that. Glad you're able to come to a, a, a live stream so so soon after subscribing. I appreciate you being here. A little bit more white down here, reflecting the table surface. There we go. Um, let's just blend it out gently. There we go. All right, uh, let's fill in the stem. So I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with the what green is this? Five seven five green. Just make the stem green first. Then I'll grab a dark brown. This is the six ten dark brown. Put in the shadow. And just a touch of black for that contrast. There, not too much black. And let's just blend out those colors so that they are good. There. Now we want to add the speckling of our apple. Now I'm not going to use white, I'm going to use this, the 105. 
And similar to the lime, I'm just going to come in here and add these little dashes. Try not to make them too... Uh, avoid a pattern. So don't make... try to avoid making any form of a pattern. And if they show up too bright, don't worry, you can just blend those out. So just get them to show up. Don't forget the ones in the shadow. Uh, I'm going to switch colors for the ones in the shadow because I don't want them to be too bright. So I think I'll use um, 690 for the speckling in the shadow. So this is a 690 color. A little bit of texture. Uh, and then I'll just use my blending stump very lightly. Just soften the speckling pattern so it falls in with all the other colors a bit more naturally. And if you have any one of the dots that are a bit too bright, just brush them out a little bit more, a little bit extra. There we go. There's our apple. So the final thing to do is the drop shadow. And I have a couple colors for that. Uh, let's see, the first color I'm using, is this the... Just double checking my colors here, and they're kind of scattered about now. So the first color is 706. Uh, and the way that we're going to do the shadow is I'm just going to fill it in with this 706 gray first. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm just filling it in. And we'll apply some of our extra colors over top to get it to look the way that we want. Including where the shadows get darker. And lighter also. This is kind of the middle of the road gray. all the way up to the edge of the lime here. Fill it in right beneath the banana. This will really help ground all of our objects onto the paper. It's, it's always good to add a drop shadow to your objects because otherwise they're just kind of like, like floating in the, floating in space on your paper. Drop shadows are a really, really good way to get your objects to just feel well grounded and really helps polish off a project like this. Almost done. All right, so we got our base layer of gray. Uh, I'm going to incorporate a bit of dark brown. This is the 610. And I'm just going to come over here to the lime and add a little bit of dark brown right in here. And also with the apple. A little bit of dark brown. Let's see, uh, I'm going to add some orange colors. Let's go with the 690. A little bit of yellow in there. Now let's come over here to our bananas. They're going to have some yellow reflecting on the, the table. Let's add a little bit of yellow in there. Let's go, uh, let's go with a little bit of red. I'm going to grab the 311. Let's uh, put some red into our apple shadow. Just as the apple reflects the table, the table will reflect the apple. So let's grab some of our green. Uh, I'm going to go with the 595. Nice dark green right over top of that brown there. Incorporate a little bit of that green for the lime. 
Um, let's go maybe a, even more yellow. I'm going to go with the uh, 210 yellow and just splash a bit of extra yellow right there. Um, and then black. So I need that shadow to be dark right up to the edge of the object. So I'm going to just bring in a little bit of black right around the bottom edge. Scrape it back right along the bottom of that banana. Uh, and just like the shadow gets darker, it also gets lighter. So I'm just going to grab the white, grab the white and um, come around the edges a little bit. Come over here on the ends. There we go. Now the last thing to do is blend it out. So let me just, uh, yeah, I'll just use the light side. And I'm just gonna come in here and gently soften that shadow. blow away the excess dust. All right, everyone, uh, there you have it. It's all done, shadow and all. Add a little bit more white here, I think. Uh, anyways, uh, that's, that's going to be it. Um, I am glad you guys uh, came by and watched the live stream. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you weren't able to catch the live stream and you came back, I hope that you enjoyed the pre-recording. Um, but anyways, uh, that is going to be it. Um, next week, there won't be a pastel tutorial here on YouTube, so you'll have to come over and join me over on Patreon. Uh, but I will be live streaming on Monday next week. Uh, I do live streams every Monday, and they are of various subjects and topics, and rather random, in fact, uh, the Drawing Journal every Monday. But uh, other than that, if you guys have any ideas for tutorials or anything that you'd like to cover, uh, make sure you, you know, message me on Facebook, uh, comment it here on YouTube. Um, there's also the Unmask Family Facebook group. Uh, I have a link for that in the description. You can come join that. You can make requests over there. Uh, you can email me. There's a ton of ways to get a hold of me. I love doing tutorials, and you guys usually come up with much better ideas than I do, uh, so I'm open to all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, so if there's anything, let me know, and otherwise, have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Take care. Peace.